Welcome to Celtic Advent. I'm pretty excited about today's reflection, actually. So today we're looking at the O Antiphon, which is O Rex Gentium, O King of the Nations. And we'll just look at each of those words, all, all the key words there, King and Nations. And as I say, I'm pretty excited about it. Let's just pause. Allow our hearts to be opened, allow our hearts to come to rest. And the senses that may have been scattered around the place today, let's just recenter them, and focus all our attention on Jesus, the light of our lives, the King of the nations, as we'll think about in a moment. Once again, Jesus, we welcome you. We invite you to open our hearts, open our minds, open all of our senses, to hear what it is that you have for us, to enter into your truth, and to live fully, freely, lightly, and to help us to flourish. Amen. O King of the Nations, and their desire, the cornerstone making both one. Come and save the human race which you have fashioned from clay. O Rex Gentium, come, O King of the Nations. So as we've been working through the antiphons, I find it fascinating to note once again that the, the messianic prophecies in Isaiah quite often refer to the Messiah coming for the nations. And that would have been quite a, quite a stretch for the Jewish mindset. You know, they were believing that they were the chosen race, that, that God was their God and they were his people. And it was, it was an exclusive thing for them. So the whole concept of Messiah coming for the nations was quite a big stretch, quite different to the way that they'd experienced life up to that point. We'll come back to that thought about Jesus being the king of the nations, but first let's think just about the fact that Jesus is king. I think for me the utter depravity of our human condition was really laid bare in the parable that Jesus told of the servants who had been entrusted the goods of their good master who was away on business and was going to be coming back. And in this parable that Jesus shared in Luke 19, the ruler was treated very harshly by the servants, of course. And in verse 14, they cry out quite willfully, we will not have this man to reign over us. And it seems that Jesus was predicting what the crowds would be baying just before his crucifixion. We will not have this man to reign over us. It's a phrase that I find quite haunting and incredibly sad that in our, as I say, in our depravity, we don't recognize the good that this king has to offer us. And so we refuse him and we say, no, we will not have your way. We want our way. We want to live our way, thank you very much. We don't want your ways. So I think as we remember once again that Jesus is the King, then we make a choice today to swim against the tide of this world. And once this world continues to bay out that terrible phrase, we will not have this man to reign over us, we say something else and we say it quite strongly and we decide we make a decision to say we will have this man to reign over us so let's return to that thought about the nations i find it quite fascinating that jesus 
in Matthew 28 spoke very clearly to his disciples after his resurrection of course that all authority in heaven and on earth had been given to him to me and then he commissions them therefore go and make disciples of all nations now Jesus had previously sent his disciples out and he was very clear to them at that stage so this is before his death and resurrection obviously and he sends them to the lost sheep of Israel and he makes very clear do not go outside of the house of Israel but now he's getting their attention he's saying something has changed things will never be the same again because of course he in his death and resurrection had claimed the keys of death and hell he was now able to do the thing that was promised of the Messiah that he would free us and now we can be completely free from sin and from death's consequences so Jesus gets their attention he says it's all different now guys I have now got all authority now is the time to go to all nations not just the house of Israel his reign is for everyone So let's ponder, first of all, that thought about Jesus being the king. In Romans 12, verse 1, Paul says, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. So let's bow our hearts as we just ponder for a moment in quietness and offer him our worship which is our whole lives as a living sacrifice. I must dwell a moment longer thinking about the nations and the fact that Jesus had all authority. So, so Jesus let his disciples know that everything had changed and that he had all authority. And then he commissioned them and said, go make disciples of all nations. I heard somebody preaching once saying it wasn't the great suggestion. It was the great commission. There's no choice here. Jesus, the King commissions us. The Moravian missionaries would yell, the slain lamb must receive the reward for his sacrifice as they went on mission, as they gave themselves for the sake of the cause. Let's ponder, who will we go to for the sake of the cause, for the sake of the slain lamb? Who will we go to this Christmas and who will we go to in 2022? Where is your mission? Where are you making disciples in 2022? Let's just sit with that for a moment longer. And then finally, as we just come to close in action, as I said, I think this could be a massive, massive moment for us. Why don't you make a journal entry to mark your decisions today? When people encountered the living God and made some big choices, sometimes they would build an altar. I encourage you to build an altar in your journal. Write something down in your journal today. Because the reality is, if we truly make Christ our King, and if we truly go on his behalf to the nations, then the year ahead will be full of adventure and full of stories. Let's pray. Jesus, we welcome you into our lives once again, O King of the nations. You are our desire. And we're so grateful that you've joined together the Jews and the Gentiles, and you are the King of all the nations. Come and save the human race which you fashioned from clay. So we offer ourselves 
as living sacrifices. We offer ourselves as volunteers in your day of power. Take us to the nations and fill us with stories. Amen. Amen. Wow, just a couple more days. See you tomorrow. <laughs>